Hey everybody, it's Tom Webster from Edison. We're gonna get started in just two minutes. So grab a snack. Well, good afternoon and good day to the hundreds of you around the world who have tuned in to today's broadcast of the Podcast Consumer 2018. Uh, I'm Tom Webster, Senior Vice President of uh, Webinars, I guess, at Edison Research. And we're going to be showing you a number of things today. In fact, we're going to go through about five things this afternoon. Uh, the first two are going to be from the Infinite Dial, which is the study of all things digital audio that we conduct each year with Triton Digital. And we're going to show you a, a recap of some things that we already showed in the Infinite Dial, just a few repeats uh, several weeks ago. And then we're going to show you some brand new data from the Infinite Dial about podcasting. The third thing I'm going to show you is just a little bit of data from our collaboration with NPR, the Smart Audio Report, because there's a little data in there about podcasting and smart speakers that uh, I'd like to use to make a point. Uh, the fourth thing we're going to look at is some new unreleased data from our our share of your syndicated research series, and there's going to be some pretty remarkable developments in that. Uh, and then we're going to wrap up with just a look at the five biggest implications or takeaways from from these data. So that's that's five things for the price of one, because we're all about value. So if you want to tweet about this or have any questions, you please use the hashtag PodCon18. I'll be answering questions on Twitter immediately after this webinar is done. Uh, you can also tweet me at Webby2001, but please use the hashtag PodCon18. And to answer the Hall of Fame webinar question of all time right up front, uh, this presentation will be available shortly after we wrap up here today. So the first thing I'm going to go through, and some of you may have seen some of this, but there's new data to come, uh, is data from the Infinite Dial, the study that we do each year with Triton Digital. This is a nationally representative telephone study, 50% landline only, 50% uh, mobile only, of Americans 12 plus that looks at a whole range of their digital media consumption habits and behaviors. Survey was offered in English and Spanish, and we've weighted these data to the national 12 plus population figures from the census. So this is as representative and as lock solid as we can make it. Something we showed a few weeks ago in the Infinite Dial broadcast, Awareness of the term podcasting has grown. Uh, in fact, it's really grown considerably over the last three or four years. And now 64% of the US population 12 plus, that's about 180 million humans, say that they are aware or familiar with the term podcasting. And I wanna emphasize here a point that I made during the Infinite Dial broadcast as well. Awareness of the term does not mean people know what it is. And in fact, when we look at the gap between the percentage of people who say they're aware of the term and the percentage of people who are actually regular consumers of podcasts, it's quite a gap. And I think understanding the reasons for that gap uh, are very important for the people in this industry. In terms of people ever listening to podcasts, that's now 44% of Americans 12 plus. Uh, and you can see, obviously, we've been tracking this all the way back in 2006, back when the industry was in its in its podfancy, I think is a bad word. I won't use that again. But today, about 124 million Americans say they've ever listened to a podcast. When we look at that by monthly listeners, and much of what we're going to look at for the rest of this presentation are monthly podcast consumers. They're who we really consider 
to be the minimum definition of a podcast consumer. That number has gone up from 24% to 26% year over year, and that's grown all the way from 9% uh, back in 2008. That's an estimated 73 million Americans say they've listened to at least one podcast in the last month. So when we look at monthly podcast consumers 12 plus, we see that it's getting pretty close to even here with men and women. When this, when podcasting really first started, it was uh, considerably more male, and certainly a lot of that was content driven. But uh, this pie continues to to balance out a little bit more every year, which is good because a balanced pie is is delicious. We can see here in terms of the demographics, 30% now of 12 to 24 year olds say they've listened to a podcast in the last month, 32% of 25 to 54 year olds, and 13% of those 55 plus. And we see a little bit of growth in every demographic here, which is good. And I still think there's a tremendous opportunity for 55 plus, and there's really no reason why that cannot and should not be higher, especially as smartphone penetration in that demographic continues to grow. Uh, I'm just five years from those golden ages myself, and I don't plan on stopping listening to podcasting. And I think there's plenty of opportunity for content and marketing to people who are 55 and older uh, that I think would enjoy podcasts. Now that's the percentage of each age group who say that they are monthly consumers of podcasting. This is the composition of the total podcast audience. And we've compared it here with the US population 12 plus on the left and monthly podcast consumers on the right. That pie again continues to get slowly more and more balanced over the years. Podcasting used to be overwhelmingly 25 to 44 in its infancy. And now we see that the composition of the podcast audience Although it's still fairly heavily weighted in the younger ages, it's starting to balance out and get closer and closer to the U.S. population. Again, 32% of the U.S. population is 55 plus, 19% of the podcast audience is 55 plus. I do think there's tremendous opportunity there. Now, in terms of the percentage by gender who listen to a podcast monthly, with men, that's flattened out here at 27%, but with women, it continues to grow up from 21% last year to 24% this year of all women 12 plus who say they've listened to a podcast in the last month. So it's good to see that continue to grow as more and more content becomes available. Now we've reported this for years. It does continue to be true that the annual household income of the podcast consumer and here, we're, the podcast consumer, as I mentioned before, we are defining as people who have listened to at least a podcast in the last month. The podcast consumer, the regular podcast consumer here, much more likely to make uh, more than $100,000 per year in terms of household income. So they are uh, continue to be a very attractive advertising target. And certainly, as the dollars that have flowed into the space have continued to increase over the years, that remains true. Podcast consumers are also more likely to have attained higher levels of education. Uh, you look all the way at the right, 23% of the US population has some graduate school or an advanced degree. That's 34% with podcast consumers. Again, that split used to be even higher. That continues to balance out a little bit. Uh, back in the early days of podcasting, when I first started listening, it almost required a graduate degree to even consume them. But of course, now they're very, very frictionless. And you can see the employment picture here, the employment composition of podcast consumers versus the U.S. population. 45% of the U.S. population, according to census figures, have a full-time job. 54% of podcast consumers do. And you can look all the way, the other uh, categories here, mostly even. Uh, the big difference you can see are retirees. Again, there's that 55-plus opportunity, the golden opportunity to be terrible. Let's take a quick look now at weekly podcast listening. And again, we did report on this before uh, in the infinite dial, which uh, we did several weeks ago, myself and John Rosso from Triton Digital. An estimated 48 million Americans say they've listened to a podcast in the last week, nearly 50 million. We're getting there for a weekly podcast audience. And that's up from 15% last year to 17% this year. So that number continues to grow. Another number that continues to grow is the average time that weekly podcast listeners spend listening to podcasts. Again, these are weekly podcast listeners. We'll make that exception here. I'm generally showing you monthly. And you can see the pie is fairly well distributed here, but the mean six hours and 37 minutes. And the mean last year was about five hours. It was about five hours and about five podcasts per week. You can do that math. Uh, this year, however, all of those numbers have gone up. 
people are adding more podcasts to their media diet. Uh, and that's going to have some pretty profound implications when we get to the new share of year data I'm going to show you later. Again, the number of podcasts listened to in the last week has gone up. It is now an average of seven podcasts listened to per week if you are a weekly podcast consumer. That number was stuck at five for many, many years, and now it's at seven. And as I mentioned in the Infinite Dial webinar that we uh, did several weeks ago, some of that at least has to be due to the influx of new daily podcasts. And I'm sure many of you uh, on this webinar consume at least one or two of these new daily podcasts that are being offered generally by news organizations. And that's certainly one of the contributing factors to this number going from five a week to seven per week. And so if you think about it, the numerator and the denominator of podcasting have both gone up quite a bit in the last three or four years. Not only has the number of podcast consumers gone up and that's sort of grown slowly and steadily as it has for years, but we see this dramatic uptick in the number of podcasts and the amount of time spent with podcasts. So when you multiply more new people and the people already listening, listening to more podcast minutes, we're going to see, again, some real ramifications in terms of the overall audio diet of Americans. This year, about a quarter of, of podcast consumers, again, we're back to monthly podcast consumers here, say the device they use most often to listen to podcasts is the computer, but the smartphone is the device used most often by 76% of monthly podcast consumers. Smartphone, tablet, portable device, overwhelmingly uh, mentioned here by more podcast consumers as what they use to listen to most. Now, as I did during the Infinite Dial, uh, I want to linger for a moment on this graph. First of all, uh, the graph that we had in Infinite Dial was with Americans, with, uh, with all podcast users uh, who say they've ever listened to a podcast. For this webinar, we're focusing in really on the regular customers of podcasts. Uh, of podcasts. So this number looks a little bit different than it did in the Infinite Dial. The thing I want to uh, emphasize here and I, I did this before, but I, I have to tell you, I, I listen to your podcasts. Everybody out there, I listen to all of your podcasts, uh, and people continue to get this wrong. This is not a measure of the percentage of podcasts consumed on a mobile device versus the percentage of podcasts consumed on a desktop or laptop computer. Uh, every time I've shown this, uh, these data, I've, I've listened to podcasts talk about how this can't be right because our stats show that we're 85 or 90% mobile. That's a measure of podcasts. This is a measure of humans, not podcasts, who say that the device they use most often is the smartphone, tablet, or portable device. And in fact, the people who listen, uh, who say that they most often listen on a computer, laptop, or desktop, listen to fewer podcasts. The people who say they listen on a mobile device consume more podcasts. So it's very easy to see how that 76% of humans could generate 85, 90% of your download stats. So. The next time you hear somebody misinterpret this stat, uh, you can correct them and brag that you listen to this webinar. How long have people been listening to podcasts? And it's great to see so much here, less than six months and six months to a year. When you look at people who say they've ever listened to a podcast, uh, that's a lot of new people coming in through the door in, in recent times. Of course, that means there's been some churn as well, some people that are lapsed podcast listeners who used to but now don't. By the time we get up to weekly podcast consumers here at the bottom, you can see these are the people that are most likely to say they've been using and listening to the medium for the longest, 20% five years or more, another nearly 20% for three to five years. But even still, the number of uh, the percentage of people that have come in through the door and become a weekly podcast listener uh, in the last six months or the last uh, six to 12 months, it's pretty impressive. Now, we asked people a number of locations locations and multiple answers obviously are accepted here for monthly podcast consumers have you ever listened to a podcast in these locations most people say they've listened to a podcast at home but in a car or truck is really creeping up there uh, with a pretty significant percentage of people saying they're listening in a car or a truck 58 percent of podcast consumers monthly podcast consumers say that they've ever listened to a podcast in the vehicle and certainly 58 percent of vehicles don't have the native capability to listen to podcasts. So th these are people that are using Bluetooth connections, uh, using USB ports. Some have in-dash entertainment systems. Some, sadly, and we know you're out there, are using your headphones. Don't do that. Now we asked people, where do you listen to podcasts most? And as we continue to see here, the number one answer is at home. Now again, this is a measure not of podcasts, but of humans. 
what this graph tells you is that 48% of the humans that we talk to, the monthly podcast consumer, say that they listen to podcasts mostly at home and another 26% in the car or truck. Uh, I've had some people wonder about this stat before, but it really just makes common sense. You spend more time at home than you do in a car or truck, unless you live in your car, in which case don't watch this webinar. Uh, when we ask monthly podcast consumers of the podcast that they typically listen to, how much of the podcast do they typically listen to? Most people say they listen to most of the podcast, and this is even higher with monthly podcast consumers than it was with the people who had ever listened to a podcast, which we showed in Infinite Dial. About the same number of people say they listen to either the entire podcast episode or most of it, certainly getting past the mid-roll, and only 10% say less than half the podcast uh, and 3% just the beginning of the podcast, typically. So most people are listening to most of the podcasts that they listen to. I'm gonna break this number down. This is kind of a fun number. In Infinite Dial, we showed this. Do you ever increase the speed of your podcasts in order to listen to them faster? 19% of monthly podcast consumers say, yes, they do. Uh, there's a couple of interesting factors that sort of skew this number a little bit. One, it's certainly a function of age. The younger you are, the more likely you are to say that you do this. As we get up to 55 plus, 12% say that they ever listen to the uh, pod, their podcasts at faster speeds. That's twice with 12 to 17 year olds, twice as many say that, 24%. So there is an age function with that stat. Uh, and there's also a frequency function. The more podcasts that you listen to, the more likely you are to increase the speed, presumably so you can jam more of them in. If you listen to one to three podcasts a week, 15% say that they increase the speed. Uh, four to five, 31% say that, and six or more, 23% say that. So. Certainly, there's more evidence with frequent podcast consumers that they're monkeying with the speed a little bit so that they can cram more in there. A little bit of data here on social media. As we've seen for years, podcast consumers more likely to be online, uh, more likely to use the various social media platforms. Uh, there's less and less of a difference now with Facebook, which uh, if you happen to see the Infinite Dial webinar, we reported that Facebook actually declined for the first time. Uh, so that difference is actually a little bit less. Uh, Instagram, considerably more likely to use Instagram if you're a monthly podcast consumer, considerably more likely to use Pinterest and Snapchat. And we even see Twitter and LinkedIn here showing uh, quite a bit more usage amongst podcast consumers. Twitter here continues to fall. Twitter also declined year over year. Uh, some fun data here on smart speaker awareness. And this is really uh, an incredible area of opportunity for podcasters. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this uh, in a moment, but if you are a podcast consumer, a monthly podcast consumer, you are more likely to be aware of the two leading brands in smart speakers, the Amazon Alexa uh, series of speakers, which thankfully I have changed ours name because I keep setting it off, uh, and the Google Home. 86% of monthly podcast consumers are aware of the Alexa suite of devices, and 72% are aware of Google Home. Now, some really fascinating numbers here. This year, we reported that with the total population 12 plus, 7% owned a smart speaker last year, 18% this year. It's nearly tripled in a year. That 18% is a significant number. If you look at monthly podcast consumers, however, it's much, much higher. Last year, it was 11%. This year, 30%. So not only did it grow considerably, but the gap between the two widened uh, much more. So. Uh, it, it did very nearly triple year over year with monthly podcast consumers. And think about that for a moment. If you are a podcast listener, three in 10 monthly podcast listeners have a smart speaker in their home. They have this device that we know increases overall audio consumption, but increasing the consumption of podcasts is, is a bit of an open question. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But here you can see compared to the total population here, the monthly podcast consumer leans a little bit more heavily towards owning uh, an Alexa versus a Google Home. It's a small difference here, uh, but it's a difference nonetheless. So I wanna talk a little bit more about smart speakers, and I'm just gonna show you two pieces of data from the Smart Audio Report, which is a collaboration that we have done for the past year now with NPR. There's a number of reports in this uh, and you can certainly uh, find out more from them uh, at npr.org slash smart audio. We have done a number of studies here. The, the data I'm going to show you here were from the, the original smart audio report 
which consisted of an online survey of 800 smart speaker owners and 820 non-owners, 18 plus. We weighted these data to last year's smart speaker owner estimates. And we also conducted some in-home interviews. We moved in with 15 different American families and actually watched how they used these devices. I'm gonna show you some interesting data here. These are the tasks that people say that they regularly do with their smart speaker. And there's quite a list here. In fact, the average is about eight that people say that they regularly do. Now, listening to music regularly done by 68% of smart speaker owners, but there are a whole lot of different tasks, jobs, and skills. Everything from adding to shopping lists, to controlling devices, ordering food, translating, even flight information. You can see here podcasts at 17%. 17% of smart speaker owners say that they regularly listen to podcasts. Now, of course, this number, this sample is all smart speaker owners. Not all of them listen to podcasts. So there's some zeros factored in there. But when we look at podcast consumers who own a smart speaker, we get this result. We get 24%. Now keep in mind, 100% of these smart speaker owners are podcast listeners, but 24% say that they listen to podcasts on their smart speaker. And I've talked about this stat with a number of people uh, and people have varying attitudes about it. One attitude that I've certainly heard is, uh, we don't see a lot of smart speaker listening. We're not that focused on it. And I would submit that's a bit of a chicken and egg thing. Uh, you should be seeing a lot of smart speaker listening to podcasts. In fact, there's no reason why this shouldn't be nearly 100%. After all, these are all podcast listeners. So why is that number 24% and not higher? And I think many of you know the answer to that, that it's difficult to listen to podcasts on smart speakers. There are issues that need to have skills developed and built for them. Uh, and I would submit now is a good time to do that because people who own smart speakers are early adopters, just like the people who listen to podcasts. There is a, a significant overlap between those two, the two circles of that Venn diagram, as I've just shown you. There are a lot of smart speaker owners who are podcast listeners and it needs to be made easier for them to find and consume your content and pick up in where, where you left off and things like that with the smart speaker. So I'll wrap that up at the end as well. So the last piece of research that I wanna show you here uh, are the latest results from our syndicated share of ear series. Now this is a series that uh, we make available to clients on a subscription basis and we typically don't show a lot of this publicly, but there's been some incredible shifts here and so we did wanna share this a little bit with you. Our share of ear, our share of ear series, for, this, for these data I'm going to show you, 5,538 respondents completed a 24-hour audio listening diary. Some of those diaries were online, some of them were in a printed booklet, depending on the preference of the respondent. It's a national sample 13 plus, conducted in English and Spanish, and we do this quarterly uh, and roll this up together into uh, a significant sample, which you can see here. So what we ask people to do in the share of ear research is to fill out a diary that tells us in 15 minute increments what kind of audio they listen to. And if they listen to nothing, they write in nothing. Uh, it could be AM, FM radio, it could be music that they own, it could be podcasts, it could be any number of things, where they consumed it, what type of content roughly it was, music, news, et cetera, and what device they used. And people fill this in uh, throughout the day in 15 minute increments, and then we code all of that uh, in, a, in a very labor intensive process to come up with what is the only single source measure of all things audio. It's the only single source measure of both online and offline audio measured to the same scale. Because certainly all of these various audio services are measured somehow, but they're all measured differently. So there's a, a lot of apples and oranges and, and kiwis and bananas here. Uh, you have radio measured one way, you have podcasts measured another, you have uh, satellite radio, which really doesn't even announce these sorts of things. It uh, usually just tells you subscribers. So this is a single source measure of uh, of all things audio in the United States. So what I'm going to show you now is through the first quarter of this year. This is our most recent share of your data from, the, from Q1 2018. And again, it's about 5,500 respondents completed these diaries. Uh, this number has not changed very much. On average, people spend about four hours listening to audio. It's a skosh under four hours in the most recent data. That's a number that has stayed relatively the same. And when you think about that, uh, we've been doing this study since 2014. And since 2014, that number has really been essentially static, about four hours. Uh, 
So when we're talking about share of ear when in terms of podcasting, right now, it really is a bit of a zero-sum game. There's only so many hours people devote to audio. We do know that people who listen to podcasts in general listen to more audio, more hours of audio. But if people are going to listen to more podcasts, if this number doesn't go up, that means they have to take it from something else. So this is the most recent share of ear. And now I want to highlight here, this is percentage of audio time, time in minutes, percentage of audio. These are not percentages of people. So when you add up all of the audio, all of the time that we spend listening to audio, 50% of that time is spent listening to AM FM radio content. Now that could be AM FM radio delivered on a radio, that could be AM FM content delivered over the internet. We're talking here about AM FM radio content. Now in practice, the overwhelming majority of AM FM radio content is consumed on a radio and not through a stream. Streaming audio, things like Pandora and Spotify and Amazon Music and Google Play, that makes up 16% of all the audio by time that we spend. 14% of that time is spent with owned music, and that's a number that continues to decline, and that's our CDs, digital files, uh, MP3 files, things like that. 8% of time is spent with Sirius XM. 5% of time is spent with TV music channels, and that number always surprises people. It really hasn't changed over the years, and we're not talking about MTV here. We're talking about the, uh, the music-only channels that are frequently at the very high end of your cable dial. Podcasts here are 4%. Uh, 4%, by the way, if it prints on this graph, it's a significant number. If it prints on this graph, it represents at least tens of millions of minutes spent per day listening to these forms of audio. So podcasts are 4% and then everything else, audiobooks and things like that rolls up into 3%. So that's what the current share of ear looks like. Now, that number includes obviously all the people who don't listen to podcasts. So that's going to average that number down. But if we just look at podcast listeners in share of ear, then we see a very different story. In fact, podcasts are the number one source of audio for podcast listeners. Now, that may sound like it's a foregone conclusion, but it's not, and it hasn't always been the case. AM, FM radio used to be the top source of audio for podcast listeners, but over the years, this has crept up with podcast consumers. Now, if you are a podcast consumer, you spend 33% of your audio time listening to podcasts. AM, FM radio is in second at 25%, and then there's kind of a virtual tie here between streaming audio and owned music. So if you're a podcast listener, a lot of the time you spend listening to audio is spent listening to podcasts. And again, although that may seem like a, uh, a kind of a no-brainer kind of conclusion, it wasn't always the case. And by the way, if you are a podcast listener, if you did say that you listen to podcasts in this study during your, your diary day, the average time that you spend listening to audio is closer to six, so it's nearly 50% higher than what the average time is for the general population 13 plus. Now here's really the big reveal of this entire section, and that is that podcasting's share of ear has doubled in four years. Again, as I mentioned before, it has functionally been a zero-sum game through those four years. The time that we spend listening to audio has not really changed but podcasting has doubled its share of it in just four years. And that's a function of what I talked about before. Not only is there user growth, but there's also growth in the number of podcasts we're listening to and the amount of time we're spending listening to them. And all of that has added up to what is really a significant shift in our share of your data. The share of your for podcasting has doubled since we started tracking this in the first quarter of 2014. Now we also ask, what devices do you use to listen to audio? And this is again with Americans 13 plus. Uh, Americans 13 plus spend 47% of their audio time listening to content through an AM FM radio receiver. Uh, and as you'll recall, 50% of the content we listen to by time is AM FM radio content. So you can kind of do the math in your head. It's mostly consumed on an AM FM radio. Uh, another 23% of, of audio by time is consumed on a mobile device. 10% uh, on a computer, 6% on a Sirius XM receiver, and then you can see TV audio channels and CD player uh, further on down in the page. Now, I wanna look just a moment at the 23% of time we spend listening to audio on a mobile device, on our smartphones. This is for podcast listeners. If you are a podcast listener, you spend 44% of your time listening to audio on your mobile device and 20% on your computer. AM FM radio receiver goes all the way down to 20. 
So there's significantly less consumption of uh, a spent a time spent listening to a traditional radio by podcast listeners, and significantly more spent listening to audio through a mobile device. It's almost the majority of of time is spent listening to audio on a mobile device compared to other devices. So that is a very different shift in terms of the habits and behaviors of podcast consumers. Overall, when we look at the entire sample in Share of Ear, 40% of the humans that we interviewed in Share of Ear listen to at least some audio on a smartphone in a day. So nearly four in 10 overall consumed at least some audio on their smartphone in that day. And when we look at uh, 13 plus share of time spent listening to audio sources on a smartphone, now this is only the share of ear on a smartphone, not the total, we see a very different story. AM FM radio, which was 50% overall on a smartphone is 8% of content by time. Number one here is streaming audio. And again, that's things like Pandora, Spotify. We're talking about the pure play streaming services because AM FM content uh, is folded into that AM FM radio category. So 39% of time listening to audio on a smartphone is spent listening to streaming audio. Owned music is at 33%. And podcasts are at 11%, so nearly triple what the overall share of ear is with Americans 13 plus. Now, when we look at podcast listeners, the share of time they spend listening to audio on a smartphone, it's significantly higher. In fact, it is officially the majority of the audio they listen to on their smartphones. 52% of the time that podcast listeners spend listening to audio on their smartphone is devoted to podcasts. So there is significant mobile consumption. We know this now, but not only is there significant consumption, it is actually the biggest source of audio on the smartphone that people who are podcast listeners consume. Uh, you see here AM, FM radio drops down to four, streaming audio to 18, and owned music to 20. So if you are a podcast listener, listening to audio on your smartphone, there's a better than even chance that it's a podcast. And uh, I'll show you this by 13 to 34 year olds, it's about the same story. Uh, more streaming audio here on the young end and a little bit less owned music. Again, that's a trend that we continue to see. Uh, podcasts are about what they were uh, with the general population here on terms of smartphone listening, that 10%. So with all that, I wanna wrap this up uh, by making just five quick points here. And we've certainly discussed all of these implications throughout this study. Uh, the first thing, which I just showed you is that podcasting share of ear has actually doubled in four years. That's a really significant shift. Again, when you consider that the actual time spent listening to audio in terms of hours per day has remained static, podcasting has been able to increase its share of pie just over the last four years. So uh, that's a very important development and that's one that I think is going to continue and will continue to be important as we track this over the coming years. In-car listening is really starting to grow here. It's become, uh, if you are a monthly podcast consumer, it's starting to creep up there. It's a strong number two to at-home listening, and it's a major potential source of new listening, encouraging people to take podcasts with them in their car, telling them how to do that, uh, giving them a reason to do that. And I think, again, there's a lot of opportunities here for other kinds of topical daily content uh, that go beyond just simply reporting the news or having a take on the news. There's lots of potential for daily short content to go along with the, with the longer podcast that people consume everywhere. And that's going to be really important for in-car listening. Uh, nearly four in 10 Americans, 12 plus, are familiar with the term podcasting, but are not regular listeners to podcasting. They're not in that 26% 20 who say they're monthly listeners. So there's a big gap between the people who say they're familiar with the term but don't do it. And that is certainly something that this industry needs to find out. Everybody needs to find it out for themselves. Why is that? Uh, I know there's, I, I certainly know some of the reasons why. Uh, and we're gonna be unveiling some new research on this at Podcast Movement later this year. Uh, we're really gonna look at this issue because I think there are a lot of assumptions about podcasting, uh, about how we talk about podcasting and about who we talk uh, to podcasting with that need to be challenged. Uh, I think there's tremendous opportunity to grow podcast with persons 55 plus. We know that uh, the audience for talk radio is quite a bit older. Uh, there's an older audience for audiobooks. In other words, if you're 55 plus, you consume a lot of spoken word content. You have a passion for spoken word content. And so there's plenty of opportunities, I think, to grow 55 plus. And that's not just about content. That's 
That's largely about marketing. That's largely about reaching these people, telling them what a podcast is and why they should bother listening to one. I think that's untapped opportunity there that is going to continue to grow, especially as more and more seniors, and I hate to use that term as I approach my golden years myself, uh, have a smartphone in their pocket. And finally, podcast producers really need to make it easy for consumers to access their content on smart speakers. A lot of you may look at your server data now and say it's a small number. Maybe it shouldn't be a small number. There's a significant gap here between the percentage of podcast listeners who listen to audio on their smart speakers and the percentage of podcast listeners who listen to podcasts on their smart speakers. That's a number I think that should be higher. So uh, today, uh, even today, Amazon announced a way to make skills much more easy to craft. Uh, I'm gonna start building some myself. So there's really no reason not to be able to build something bespoke to get your podcast out there. I think it's really, really important uh, and really crucial. And it's not about the speaker. It never will be about the speaker. It's about voice assistant technology. And that technology is going to be baked into cars. It's going to be baked into your refrigerator. It's going to be baked everywhere that you want to access content and can do things. So that's going to be really important for podcasting, I think, uh, in the near term to get that fixed if you, need, if you haven't already. So I'm going to stop there. Uh, again, the hashtag is PodCon18 if you have questions. Uh, shortly, uh, in a few minutes, we'll have this up on our website, and uh, Triton will have it up there as well. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you for your time and attention. Uh, it's been our pleasure to give this uh, gift to the industry and to the podcasting community, and we certainly thank Triton Digital uh, and NPR for their assistance in doing that. Uh, and I'm going to sign off here and take questions on Twitter. So thank you very much for listening to the Podcast Consumer 2018.